everybody and welcome to the Chemistry 121 Supplemental Instruction Series of videos. I'm Joey Smokey and in this episode I'm going to be talking to you guys about acid nomenclature. Now you already know how to name things like covalent bonds and ionic bonds and all that, so just to make life harder, we now have to name acids. But it's really not that hard, so don't worry about it. To start off with, there's two main types of acids. Your first kind is your binary acid, which is where you basically have hydrogen bonded with one other thing like HCl or H2S, binary meaning two things. Your polyatomic acids are pretty self-explanatory. Polyatomic, you know, you obviously have a polyatomic ion and you just turn it into an acid. So to name these things, when you look at your binary acid, what you're going to do is look at the element X, which could be anything like chlorine or sulfur, whatever you're making the acid out of, and you're going to add an IC ending, an IC ending. On top of that, when you make an acid out of a binary compound, you're going to be adding the hydro prefix. The hydro is standing for hydrogen to let you know that you got the hydrogen there and it's an acid. So if you were to name something, like for example, let's take make sulfur and turn that into a binary acid. We add the ic ending, so that's sulfuric, and then you add the hydro prefix. So it's going to become hydrosulfuric acid. And don't forget to put the acid at the end. We'll do some examples in a minute. So for your polyatomic acids, it's a little bit more complicated because you have to look at the, er, at the prefixes and the suffixes, you know, the parts that make it polyatomic, how you, how you distinguish those from your normal things. So when you look at your ending, for example, if you have nitrite with the ITE ending, if you want to make an acid out of that, you have to take away the ITE ending and instead put the OUS ending there. So it would become nitrous acid. On the other hand, if you have the ATE ending, for example, if you have nitrate, you're going to drop the A-T-E and replace that with I-C. So that would become nitric acid, and that's the difference. Now, there's one particular kind of polyatomic ion, and we can do some examples with that, where you have the hypo prefix and the per prefix. And basically those correspond with the I-T-E and the A-T-E endings, respectively. So really, you don't really need to worry too much about these, but just know that if you see either one of these, Prefixes is going to also correspond to these two uh, suffixes when you put them at the end to name it. All right, so make sure you write all these down since they're your basic rules for naming acids. And let's do some examples. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the binary acid. We'll take HCl. Pretty standard, okay? So we see we have the chlorine, so obviously we're going to have to drop the NE ending and add the ic to make it chloric. So it's going to be chloric, like that. And remember, since it's binary and we have this H here, we, we have to add the hydro prefix. So it's going to become hydrochloric acid, acid at the end, like that. Okay? Now, let's go ahead and do one more, and we'll say uh, H3P. So we have phosphorus, and we're making a binary acid out of this. To do that, we have phosphorus, so it's basically going to be phosphoric. Because remember, you have to phosphoric, add the IC ending, and then obviously it's an acid, so acid over here. And remember, it's binary, so you have to put the hydro prefix. So hydrophosphoric acid. Now notice that this isn't exactly two things. There's actually four things here. But it's still considered a binary acid because you only have two particular types of elements involved, hydrogen and phosphorus. So that's why it's still considered a binary acid. Okay. So there we go. Those are some examples with your binary acids. Let's take some examples with some polyatomics. Okay, so let's go ahead and work with the chlorate ones. Perchlorate. You may not have to memorize these for the particular class, but I encourage to practice naming these ones because it's really helpful to really understand how to name your polyatomic acids. So we have the perchlorate, the chlorate, the chlorite, and the hypochlorite. Like so. Now notice here, remember how I was talking about the prefixes and the suffixes kind of seem to go hand in hand. When you have per, you also have eight. When you have hypo, you also have it. Okay? So basically all you got to look at is your endings. 
So when you're going to name these guys per chlorine, it's pretty simple. Drop the ATE and add ICE. So this will become perchloric. Remember to keep the prefix there. Perchloric. And obviously, since we're making it an acid, we have to add the acid. And for this particular one, it would be HClO4. That's what it would look like. Now we have chlorate. Again, we see we have the AT ending, so we have to replace that with the IC ending for an acid. So it's going to become just chloric acid. Chloric acid. And if you know this polyatomic ion, when you make it into an acid, it's going to look like this. HClO3, like so. Okay, now we're to chlorite. ITE, so that means we're going to have to add the OUS ending for an acid. So it's going to become chlorous acid. Chlorous acid. You can kind of notice the pattern here. Even though it looks really complicated, they're so similar, you can notice the difference. The ic always goes to eight, the us always goes to i. So you can notice the pattern there. So chlorous acid is going to look like this. HClO2, like that. And finally, we're at hypochlorite. To make this into an acid, keep the prefix, and then add the OUS ending, so it will become hypochlorous acid. So hypochlorous acid. And the formula for this is going to be simply HClO. And you can also notice the pattern here. The O's just drop down one each time. Four, three, two, just one. So you can kind of notice, relate that to your endings and how they name it to an acids and all that. It's all linked together. You just got to figure out the pattern and you'll be perfectly good at it. So there you go. That's the basics of acid nomenclature. It's not too hard, but just make sure you go out there and get some practice and really understand how to do it. All right. Go out there and have some fun with acids, but be careful because you might get burned.